Hey guys, girls, chicas, muchachos, senoras y senoritas, tonight is another special night because we're going to redo an older video that I made a couple of, of rebuilding the Rio Miser, the original Rio Miser slash RM2, hopefully in much clearer crystal HD well lit display and hopefully I can um, pick, show you some tricks that I've learned along the way with uh, how to build this thing. We're going to shoot for a build in about the 1.4, 1.2 ohm range. We're going to use 29 gauge Canthal A1 to do that. Um, I like 29 gauge just because it heats up so quick and it's such a versatile wire um, in that range. I'm going like anywhere between 8 to 10 wraps never really like to get more than 10 unless i was building for a vv grand getting below eight i find um hot legs just become a little bit harder to get rid of and i don't like messing around with hot legs i like to queue it up and be done with it not worry about a week later if i've developed a hot leg and i don't have that problem when i stick between eight nine ten wraps so hopefully this i got a little gizmo set up here i'm not going to go into wrapping the coil first in the video I'm going to show you, let's see, we've got three different ways I'm going to wrap a coil for you at the end. You just pick which way is the easiest, and I'm just going to slam one of them on here real quick for purposes of this video. So, uh, right now, tonight, I'm vaping my silver hammer tone. He's bumming because he likes to roll this door right here. This is our nice workhorse. He likes running that door. So, tonight, i got to put this on. I also notice when I go out in the colder weather, those open doors, the open mod, when it's really cold and you're riding around on like a golf cart and it gets really cold, you kind of want your mod closed up a little more because the juice gets thick. My VG gets thick. So I, I've got this door on. So he, he wants that one, but it's too damn bad. But he still vapes like a rock star. Give him a little squonk. Check him out and see if I'm telling the truth. This is a, um, it's about a .7 ohm dual coil setup of 29 gauge again because it's a quick heat up 30 gauge heats up quick too but it's it's a doesn't sound like much but it's a lot flimsier and spindlier than i find 29 to be and 28 to heat up on it particularly with dual coils just seems to take a lot longer and the cool down is longer so that just means it's just sitting there sizzling your juice when you got your finger off the old detonator so let's let's just check this one out Yeah, that's why I like my dual coils. But we're going to make this RM2 build vape very similar to that. Let's examine the RM2 real quick if we might. Do a quick camera angle change. Okay, so what we've got here is a stock LP RM2. Now I've stuck it, I, this is a contraption that I came up with. Let me pan out a little bit for you. This is like a... Uh, Oh, hey, I got this thing set a little loose. Sorry about that, y'all. That shouldn't happen again. All right, there we go. Let me pan out a little bit so I can show you what I think I've rigged up to show you better on the camera. This is a tripod for holding an iPhone. Since I'm no longer filming, filming with my iPhone, I got it on it. That way I could kind of do a stable hold and show you different stuff with it twist it around yeah I get my camera angles right anyway this is just a standard cartometer that's sitting on here inside of this nifty little tripod always thinking always thinking always moving forward as well look at it so I'm hoping this will help as a platform to be able to demonstrate so we got a standard low profile arm too on there as you can see um, let's remove the cap this is what you're gonna get when you get an RM2 comes with the cap, it comes with the drip tip. So tightening back in on our little deal here. There is the RM2 atomizer. Okay, this is the side 
we're going to build on right over here. We're going to build right between these two posts. So I've taken loosened the screw. The other thing you'll notice since yesterday's or the last video I made, which I made yesterday, I'm trying to short this thing out. So I've changed the screws to some um, screws that work with this driver. I'm not a big fan of the stock screws that come on the RM2. I just found that in my case, maybe for not everyone, but they came loose too easy. And again, I like using this one driver bit on all of my stuff. Okay. So this is where the juice is going to come up out of the deal when you squonk it. We're going to show you all that at the end. By the time we're done with this video, we're going to be vaping like rock stars. We're going to have this thing going nuts. So here's where I'm hoping this thing will really shine, this little tripod. Trying to show elevation and angles. I can show you how high my coil is going to be by just elevating this. I could show you, uh, it's just, like I said, it's hard to get used to the camera when it's in front of you, how high it's going to be that way. So I'm hoping this little thing will really bring me a big step forward in being able to demonstrate a decent build. It may be that I build it on the floor. We'll see how stable this thing is. And then once I've got it mounted, I stick it on there. When I say on the floor, I mean on this thing here, this whatever white thing, my cutting board. So anyway, let me, um, let's go ahead and get into mounting up the coils. Be right back. Okay, so you just watched how easy and how many different ways there are to wrap coils. We started out with this one that I wrapped by hand around that little driver. You could use anything. People use Q-tips, um, you name it, toothpicks, it's different size screwdrivers. I try and stay in right about the 16th of an inch range though because again, here's a coil that's slightly larger. I'll tell you what size that one was called. It's called a two millimeter, 440 screw. Two millimeters to me is large. And I'll show you why that's important when I stick it on my RM2. And I mean large in a sense of diameter because it, it just leaves you very little adjustability. Plus just that way that is wound. This one is just kind of done more for show. I, I wouldn't mount that on anything. But you could wrap a pretty nice coil on a screw. Okay. So let's just discount this one out of here. Then let's look at this machine wound coil. That is kind of a small little... I would call it like a work of art on a small machine, very easy to use. So let's mount that one, okay? Let's go ahead and just throw that one on the RM2. You could wrap probably close to that good by hand too if you just wanted to take a little bit of time, but it's not gonna have the even amount of tension that you're gonna get on a coil um, that you're gonna use on a machine. So let me get my little device over here with the RM2 on it and let's build it up. Okay. From this point going forward, all we're going to need is our coil here. Our coil, I put it on my 17 gauge needle as a, a way to wrap. That's the way I, I used to install it on there. No surprise tools, no torches, no blow torches, no squeezing, just our driver to tighten the screws. And these little wire cutters to cut wire. And you will see that I'm kind of even inept when it comes to cutting wire. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this leg shorter because you'll see why if you're new, even if you're not new. I've always done that. So I'm going to stick in the long leg first. One thing I found on the RM2 and pretty much any atomizer where there's a little lip on the edge is I bend the end of this wire up just a little tiny bit, like a little, like a little J in it. Can, can this, the camera capturing that? Just a little J. So we want to get it through. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other one too. Just like a small J. That way once I get it through the hole, I'm going to turn this and put it through the hole. It starts to come up and it clears the rim of the other side of the atomizer just like that, see? And there's that. You have just done, oh, let me throw this out there too. The reason why I didn't focus so much on building these coils in the beginning of this is because you can buy pre-made coils. I, I have never bought one and bought any and wouldn't recommend them, but you can buy pre-made coils. If the dexterity to wrap a coil just isn't your deal, you don't want to wrap it, you can buy them. Um, so I didn't want to spend a bunch of time. So that's why this video is starting out with us mounting a coil. You can watch how to wrap those coils after all this. Okay, so there you've got where your coil is. People 
and I've probably done my best to confuse people when I've talked about this. Let me get a pointer. The juice, let me take this thing out. When you squonk an RM2, the juice is going to come out of this hole right here. You don't want your coil over that hole. I don't know if I've ever confused or misled anybody to think that you want your coil over that hole because you don't. Where you want your coil is centered between and perpendicular to these posts. Like if I took my screwdriver and an imaginary line out, that's where you want your coil. You're going to want it close to the edge of your deck, edge of that white thing, edge of the base. So what I'm what I'm going to do most times is if you don't mind, I'm going to turn this towards and I can see it. I'm going to probably mount it a little closer to the post than I'd like, and then I use a little tension to pull it out. So I know you don't see anything right now, and that's partially because I'm a dumbass. I always block everyone from the camera. Two, because I, I'm not really doing anything earth or other. I'm pulling this coil close to the posts, and then I'm going to use tension to pull it out. So right now I'm in a position... Well, I'm about ready to tighten. So we're going to do that. We're going to tighten these posts down, these, these terminal screws down on the Addy terminal posts. The whole atomizer is turning with me. We're all good here. There's, we're not building a watch. There's a lot of things to look out for. As I demonstrated in my shorting video that I shot yesterday. But again, we're not building watches here. Don't over tighten your screws too much. We're just just enough to make that wire bend enough and make contact. These screws I find work well. Okay, so let's just give you a little shot. Let's take this out. And we're getting, we're not in the final mounting position yet. But I just want to show you where I'm at right now with it, okay? So we're going to do some little minor tweaks and modifications to it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my little deal through here. I'm going to straighten the coil. I'm going to pull on it. I'm going to pull a little tension on it. I'm going to straighten it while I'm pulling out towards me. Just a little bit. So, there's kind of what we got. That's kind of where I want my coil on my arm to. Now, here's where this thing will come in handy. I'm hoping it's going to come in as handy as I think it's going to come in. It's just more my camera skills than anything else. My camera skills tend to, to suck. So watch this. Let me bend this thing down a little bit so you can see a different perspective of where I'm going with that. See where the coil sits looking at it in plan view or looking straight down? It's right out by the rim, but it's not contacting it. It is not over the hole. We do not want to obstruct that hole. Okay, That's where juice is going to come out of and drain back down into it. So there you go. There's pretty much, that's your deal right there. So now if we were to look at it in elevation view, we want to see where it is on, like sideways. How high up, or let me do this too, guys. Let's give it a check of resistance real quick. I can trim these leads. 1.21. I was pretty close with my guess that I thought it would be. That's we kind of get to know that after a while. So at this point, I'm going to trim these leads off of here. And then we'll look at this coil in all different lights so you can see where it sits, where you want it to sit, and why you want it to sit where it sits. Not just in plan view, but in elevation view. So once I trim off those little pieces, I just have this habit of using the back of my tweezers. You can use whatever you want, but just to make sure that you account for these little leads that are popping out of here because they don't want them to hit anything. Because if they do, you will short it probably. I mean, I couldn't make it short it last night, but remember, that's just me. I'm, I'm lucky. I've used up all your luck. I'm lucky. That should have caused a short. So account, account for those leads. Also note that by using these larger screws, that's going to leave me, these longer screws, a lot less headroom to put a big old metal drip tip in, which is fine because I don't use a big metal drip tip in an RM2. Okay, so now let's look at this guy from the side. Where is he? How high is he? Well, he's right about that high. Can you see that pretty good? 
It's right about there. Now if we were to turn him this way and do the same thing, you'll get a good idea of how high he is in front. Again, it's not you. It's me and, and a camera, front-facing camera. There's how high my coil is in the front. Should That's going to position it probably right in front of the air hole. Okay. We've got this side view. I don't know if I'm able to provide you any visual candy there. This side view. I mean, you just turn your coal around and you look at it until you're sure of several things. One, that it's not contacting anything metal. Two, that your coil is sitting not in a place that's obstructing the air hole. Three, that your coil is, um, you little piece of dog shit. I oh, don't know, guys. Tell you what I'm going to do right about at this juncture. Take this off here. We're going to figure that out on my time. So, your coil is out away from the posts. Close to where the air is coming. Now remember, there's an air hole in the top cap. Your coil is not touching anything metal. Your leads are touching nothing metal. This was a 1.15 ohm coil. Just by tightening a screw. A lot of times we can get it to where it was. There you go, 1.21. That's that's our coil right there. 1.21, okay? 1.21. So why don't we mount this thing on a mod now and wick it? Okay, let's do it. So you, you guys got all that, where you want your coil. You're not going to come back and think, oh, it needs to go over the juice hole. No, it doesn't. Juice comes up out of that hole. Juice floods the deck and it goes back down that hole. If you put your coil over that hole, you're going to obstruct juice. Okay, we want it on an elevation about there. I like to tilt my coils. I haven't built an RM2 in a while, so I'm going to tilt this coil so it's a... All right, back at you. Just had to grab a quick vape. And, um, okay, so there's a slight tilt on that coil, as you can see. And we went over all the other aspects of where you want the coil. Again, we're going to do a top view of it. Now let's get this thing on a mod. Let's get some cotton in it. Let's squonk some unflavored Nick base into it and let's give it a vape. What do you think? Shall we do that? Let's do it. Okay, my mod of choice again as I'm going in with my low profile, super light Rio Grande. And we're gonna put this RM2 on top. Once you get familiar building and you got a little experience under your belt, you can, um build on your mod. A lot of people use a digital multimeter to check their resistance too. There's different ways to do it. But I want to make sure you have a safe coil. And the next video I'm going to make, probably tomorrow or tomorrow night, is going to be on battery safety, ohms, amps, all that good stuff to make sure that we don't ever exceed our battery safety capacity with some wild build. And we know how to find out what our battery capacity is and all that stuff. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this onto this mod. We're going to fire it. We're going to take care of any issues with the coil before we put any cotton through it. And um, for this purpose, there's where it's going to be, okay? So let's give her a shot and um, see, how it, see how it lights up. You're going to notice that it's going to light up with, with some hot legs. It will do that. And we'll take care of those hot legs quite easily. Remember that little tool we used, this little white needle? It's going to take it and slide it through the coil. I'm going to push it through the coil, pulling on it like towards you. I'm just sliding it back and forth through here towards you, the viewer, and just cueing it up, a little pressure towards you. And that should just do make this thing do exactly what we want it to do. It is a tensioned micro coil. The diameter makes it a micro coil, 1 16th, and it's tensioned, so all the wraps contact. So that's going to produce a beautiful little vape right there. Notice how fast that heats. That's what I like about 29 gauge. It heats up quick and it cools down quick. Not a lot of juice wastage. That's probably why I'm only vaping 4 milliliters of juice a day on this big old screaming dual coil 
device because my coils aren't sitting there cooking juice after I'm after I've vaped them and they're not using a whole bunch they run very efficiently so I would say it's it's very safe for us to say right now that this coil is ready to be wicked how are we gonna wick this coil you say well I use sterile rolled cotton I use Cogendo sterile rolled cotton right out of Japan and um, why do it's, I say sterile rolled cotton can I just reverse that I do not use sterile rolled cotton I use Japanese organic cotton I used to use sterile rolled cotton Cogendo little pads I cut up to make them easy to deal with and the, essentially let me pan out a little bit here sterile rolled cotton yeah I did before I found out about Cogendo I keep my Cogendo in this little nifty case the prepared pads so there's your Cogendo dealio I just grabbed me a little piece of it a sheet I've got my special wicking scissors that I only use to cut wick they are somewhere they're probably oh, they're right in front of me there they are now key to cutting cogendo and the key to wicking this little coil is knowing how much wick to use you do not want to choke that coil off you want a wick that just barely fits through there and that's where the kg the kgd just shines on that front so this being a half of a pad i took a big pad and pulled it in half so i wound up with two big pads then I cut them against the grain into, um, I cut it in half against the grain. So that means when I'm cutting this, I'm going with the grain. You want to run with the grain. But I, I used to cut like this towards you. You can't gauge it that way. You have to turn the cotton towards you. And what I've found is looking down on my scissor blade, when I look straight down on it, it makes, and I cut, it makes the perfect width of a wick perfect I mean you could not ask for a better width of a wick now Cogendo has little seeds and stuff in it which are cool which means it hasn't been processed um what I'll do is if I see one th that one probably wouldn't have been in the vape zone anyway probably way outside it I'll remove it then what I'm going to do with my Cogendo wick is I'm going to twist the very tip it helps to have moistened fingertips I just have my little bounty here moisten the tips of my fingers and I twist the very very tip of the wick and um, put it in. Let's do something else I forgot to go into on this with you. Let's give this bad boy a squonk and watch. Watch the juice come up through that hole. Now, I'm, that's not my squonk finger, so that's why it looks kind of pathetic. See how the juice comes up? And now I let off slowly and watch the juice drain out. Okay, in that period of time, it will have soaked your wick really nice. Now, let me turn it so I can get my squonk finger. I am a right thumb squonker. That's how I squonked all my life, all my squonking life. So I can, I got much more authority. About a three second press. My, this bottle is nearly low. There's your juice. Slowly let off. Watch it evacuate. Okay, so that said, we do not want to obstruct a squonk hole. When I stick my wick in, I always come through the juice hole side, just like that. Look how easy that wick went in, right? These are not my wicking tweezers. My wicking tweezers have this neat little chamfer on them. Tighten it in here for you. Tighten it in. And we're just going to grab the tip of the wick and pull it through. It already got really damp. I was Okay, now look. Watch this. This is important. The wick's in. When I grab this wick, if my mod moves like a lot, I got too much wick on there. Okay? Right now I got the perfect amount of wick. I could just see that it's perfect. It's If, it, if I would have pulled this wick and my mod would have just like followed me like a dog on a leash, I would have known I had too much. I, it didn't. Okay? It just put just enough. Look, there's no shoulders on that wick. There is zero. Look, and it, we're gonna, we're going to see that it's my mod is kind of hanging tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this wick. Now I'm gonna turn it towards me to trim it because I'm making we don't want long tails. You probably think, oh, I could put long tails on there, and I could soak up a bunch of juice, 
and I won't have to squonk like for a long time. Well, first of all, I guess I would say, what's the matter with squonking? Squonking is, is cool. I used to ash segs. Squonking to me replaces ash in a seg. I trim a short wick. I trim it really short. It's kind of like when I'm done with it, I would call it like a bow tie almost. See that? See that? That's it. That's what you want. Why? Because the longer this, this wick is sitting in this deck, it's just collecting juice that's right at coil level. And it has a tendency to kind of collect a bunch of flavors, this and that and the other thing. It also could impede drainage. The way I wick and at this resistance, I w I'm usually squonking every hit or two just out of force of habit. Now all I'm doing is I'm taking the ends of this wick and getting them inside so they're inside the deck. I would rather have a fresh vape and squonk every hit or two than not get in the habit of squonking every hit or two on a smaller atomizer like this with a single coil and no juice wells. This atomizer has big old gaping juice wells in it, so I can get like five or more. I've never, I've, five is about as much as I'm, five enormous, ginormous, vapor producing. Let's just take a look at the inside. Let's put these next to each other. What's, what's going on inside of here? You've got a dual coil, 22 millimeter, um, Addy versus that. The juice, the coil on this atomizer is way up here. The juice collects down the bottom. So I can run long wicks on it and get some hits between squonks. And it is probably time for me to re-wick this thing. But anyway, it's still, it produces. It's a little producer. This RM2 is a little producer too, okay? Don't, don't even get it wrong. It pro this produces much more when you're sucking air through those big old holes. Okay. We can do very similar stuff with this. So let's wet this wick. Let me get my squonk finger on it if you guys don't mind. Let's wet it. Get it nice and wet. And then slowly release. Right now that cogendo is, is very wet. Very good to go. And you're going to see that it produces. I want to make 100% sure. I don't want anything burning. It produces well. Okay, it produces well. Now, if you were doing this and you saw legs glowing, people wonder, wow, I get this harsh vape. I wonder if my coil is too low resistance or too high resistance or I raise it. It's just harsh and metallic. Harsh and metallic vape is when the legs, the leads that lead from your coil back to your terminal posts are red. That's called a hot leg. We showed you how to fix those already when I mounted them. But if you were to see anything like that, you would cure them by pulling that wick out and chewing it up. We don't have any. So this is going to be a very smooth and flavorful vape at 1.2 ohms. As you can see, this, this dude is producing. Okay, you're plenty of vapor. It's funny, my grandparents come over and they wonder how I get so much vapor. I say my grandparents, the, my parents, we just call them grandma and grandpa because the kids do. It's no secret. It's just knowing how to build. And I build their stuff for them. But the other thing is they don't know how to hit. They haven't learned how to hit an RBA. They still suck it like they're trying to suck the chrome off a freaking bumper. I'm trying to teach them that suck very gently. Suck slow. I can't teach them. Forget it. Anyway, so what we're going to do now with our RM2 is we're going to put a drip tip in it. And then... Notice the position of my coil right there. These come from Rob. The hole should line up. Again, see where it is? The hole in this cap, which is stock, by the way, should line up with that. 99.9. .9, well, let's just say about 95% of the time they do. You might get an off one. Um, it Over time, you may over-tighten it. I never put my atomizer on and off my mod with a cap on it, ever. So you can see that air hole lined up perfectly. So why don't we, why don't we at this juncture, take the camera up. Now I know you get to look at Alex again just for a minute. There you go. Okay. This is come equipped with scripts and fake breasts. I'm Kid Rock. I like it. See, I don't have that turned up too loud in the background because if I did, guess what would happen? 
you might not be able to watch this video right now on your device. It would probably say, brother, you hold on one second. Give me one second. I just had to move that big old light back because it was I moved it up close. Yeah, I gotta keep the music low. I'm sorry guys, but Kid Rock is the real McCoy. He's heading out west, sucker. Because he wants to be a cowboy, baby. I'm gonna vape this. Notice this drip tip. Wide bore. Delrin. Like it on the RM2. Notice my air hole. In front of the coil. Air hole, since I'm gonna point this mod at me and vape it, my air hole is gonna wanna be anywhere from three from nine o'clock over to three o'clock. Okay, nine o'clock over three o'clock. If I was to turn my mod over and hit it this way, same thing, nine o'clock to three o'clock. Not exact, but anywhere pretty darn close to that is good. Let's hit it. See what I'm saying? I don't know how, I just, I'm, I'm lucky and blessed that I could build build to just make it a lot of vapor there's no skill I mean I'm probably the least skilled person you'll ever meet but I I just make and I'm squonking again I make vaporous builds I keep my mods clean I keep my contact clean so I'm always making sure there's plenty of conductivity on everything but damn I can just that little tiny air hole that little tiny coil There's a rewarding little vape right there. Almost makes me wonder why I ever went over to these big old atomizers. I mean, why did I do that again? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Probably because I like... The wide open, I like the, now I've gotten used to this lung hitting, straight lung hitting. With this one, a mouth to lung, or am I? Let me just see, I don't even know, let me see. Yeah, mouth to lung. What a killer little vape. Low profile RM2. Um, a little Delrin drip tip. It's it's nice. What I, The problem with me is, I like one Addy on all my mods. I like every one of my mods runs the exact same atomizer. It's the only reason I'm not running an RM2 right now because I tried one of these big ones. I liked it, so I just just went started to go in that direction. I had different atomizer on different mods. But I like to have the same Addy on mod. I like to build. They're all built to the same resistance. I vape the same juice. I rotate a mod every day. So that means on every third day, I'm refilling. I'm using one battery a day. I will find towards the end of the night, just I'll clean up. And I'll put in one of my 1600s. Like later in the night, I like be hot again. And my other um, AW 2650s, is that what they are? 2250s? Those guys are still good. They're still about 3.8. I don't ever vape them below 3.7 something, like 3.78. Um, I'll then kick it back up into the 4.2 range, 4.19 range. So I'll clean up with a. 1600 at the end of the night for an hour or two sometimes Prior to that I was running about um, Two or three 1600s a day But there you go that that is my RM2 build Updated relit remagnified And I hope you liked it Super X saying hasta la vista mi amor baby man Peace. Okay, the first coil we're going to make is one that a lot of people tend to start with when they're just getting into it. Again, I'm using 29 gauge Cantal A1. I've snipped off a length of wire that's probably six inches long. Um, and we're going to wrap around this little screwdriver. I'm guessing that thing's probably about two, two millimeters, maybe five sixty fourths. And we're going to go in for eight wraps. We're going to try and make them contact. This is going to be coil number one, so I've got my wire here. It's going to throw this off to the side. That little blue thing is just computer packing. Um, I use it to hold my wire on there. That's it. It works like a charm. So I just grab the wire. I look at my RM2, which I put over here. 
I'm a big fan of the wire coming off the coil with the low leg being on this post here. I'm sorry, let me turn it so it's looking at me. I always like my low leg on the post that's over by the um, juice hole because that hole is a little bit smaller. And that's gonna be the first leg that comes off. So what that means, since I want that low leg on that side, it means I'm going to start by putting the wire underneath of the driver. I'm gonna just bend it over here and hold it. Now this isn't the prettiest way to make coils, but I promise you, you can make a coil that will vape pretty decent. So we're gonna go 10 wraps. So that means, see this piece of wire that's over here? Every time I pass that, it's a wrap. Actually, with this big, bigger bit, I'm gonna go nine wraps, okay? This is a little bit bigger bit. So I'll count every time I go around. I'm gonna be tensioning the wire, and I'm just gonna wrap. So I'll count the wraps with you, ready? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, I want to get these wraps as close and straight to each other as possible. And that's, you'll see why later, why I don't really like these methods. Again, they're great if you just got your arm too. You want to get ripping, you want to vape. They vape fine. But uh, there's some more advanced methods to wrapping coils that produce legs that come off really nice and straight. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's plenty of people that, this even this coil right here would kick their vape game up to like another couple of levels. So there's coil number one, built on this little screwdriver. What I like to have to mount onto my arm too is I just keep a little selection of these 17 gauge needles around and I'll mount each coil. I'll slide it off there and I'll stick it on. Damn, if I could just get my eyes lined up with the camera on a little 17 gauge needle. We got way too much wire on here. By now, if you've seen any of my stuff, you know I leave a leg long. Well, I find that that leg always gives me the most trouble putting it in the one over by the juice hole. So I'll leave that one a little longer and I'll trim this one. Okay, so here's coal number one. It's not the most beautiful coil, but I've wrapped and seen and vaped a lot worse. So let's stick him over here. Number two way, and I'm going in order of my least preferred way, but I'm going in order of ways that most people may be able to do this. Number two way to wrap a coil for me would be, I don't know, some kind of homemade tool or jig. I got my Sigma jig here, Sigatron coil winder. Okay, and here we're just gonna go around. You know what, the Sigmatron guy gave me one. I've never tried it, I like to do this. He gave me two of them, and they're pretty slick. This one has a big old screw on it, a machine screw. And I, I started wrapping on a screw, and you can see that that screw is pretty large compared to my standard coil size of 1 16th of an inch right here. That's large. Let's try that, though. That's going to give us a space coil. I don't vape space coils, but a lot of y'all might. And what I'm saying is I'm going to use this thing. You could just pick up a screw and wrap around it. I'm not going to tighten it down with this either because going by ways that most people might have around their house. So pretend you had your screwdriver laying around and you wanted a screw in your hand and you wanted to wrap around it. Again, I'm just going to get about six inches of wire off. Wire is not a place I skimp. You know what? I really don't skimp on. I was thinking about that. If you had to cut corners on vaping, where would you cut corners? Okay, I cut corners, so I bought these at Walmart. This, okay, I did cut corners on that. Um, I think I got this cutting board that I'm building on pretty cheap. But when it comes to the, my mods, when it comes to my batteries, when it comes to my juice, when it comes to my cotton, drip tips, atomizers, that's where I don't cut corners. I'll cut corners on little ridiculous things like this. Okay. So now, again, now we're going to go in and we're going to wrap. I'm not, this thing again is made to tighten the wire down underneath that screw. But let's get this try. I haven't wrapped around a screw in like forever. And I don't even know if the threads are going the right way for me here. Let's see. I can't 
can't tell. When I used to wrap around screws, I used a, um, no, that's the wrong way. I have to, I just have to wrap backwards is all. And then it'll fall in each land. Okay. So I started with a wire that's running parallel. And, and Sigatron, I hope, don't ever get the wrong idea, brother, that you sent me these. I've never used them like you wanted me to use them, but I use them as demos more towards, there it goes. See, it falls right in the next groove next to, there's, what, two wraps? I can't wrap on screws anymore. I used to rock with that. Four. I don't even know how many wraps I got here. This is wrapping on a screw. is something I haven't done in forever. But it produces a kind of a decent looking coil. The thing is I'm used to also having that screw come off of there. So that I can. Um, this is a big screw. I probably needed about a third of that many wraps. I guess. And then. And then you straighten up this leg like that. This thing is not made to be used the way I'm using it. Then you just unscrew the coil off the screw. That's where I'm going to be lacking because normally I'd have a screw of that same size that I'd be holding my hand, not this, and I'm just mounting on my atomizer on that screw and unscrew it when it's in place. I haven't built a screw coil in nearly two years. They, I started out building them that way. A screw coil and then once I learned how to wrap a micro coil I never went backwards but and then when we're done with this you'll see why in a second why my favorite tool is and what my favorite tool is and why there's that coil I think we kind of might call that like a hold on where'd it go like a standard it's a weird coil I I, I, okay, I'm not going to mount that coil. I'm going to show you. That's another way to, to wrap a coil. It's a big coil. It's pretty large compared to this screwdriver thing that we wrapped on. It's a pretty large coil there. If I can get it into the camera's eye, what hell do I have to do to make this where you can see them both? Okay. We're not going to wrap that screw. You get the idea. People wrap around that. I don't like coils that are that big in diameter because you don't have any you know, much adjustability on it for height and all that good stuff. So now we're going to go into my preferred method of wrapping a coil, and that's the one we're going to stick on this thing, and you'll see why in a minute. One thing I'll show you why. I have dry, really dry hands in the wintertime particularly. You can see that wrapping these coils just shreds my fingers. Well, that's why I use a machine to wrap. Let me set up my machine real quick. Okay, got my machine in hand. The Artistic Wire Coil Gizmo, my favorite tool of all time. I'm guessing it's probably it's probably even going to be better than this thing I got getting made. I'm just, I just don't know how you can top this tool without maybe, I don't know. I don't know how you can top it. It's just, it's off the chain. It's you have dry fingertips and skin or whatever just it just makes such a precise coil now remember those other coils we cut the wire off of the the dale and we wrapped like that on the artistic wire coil gizmo you don't do that you leave your wire on your spool we're going to put a little tension on it when we wind so i'm going to take a little wire off of here just a little okay i'm gonna put this thing back on here to hold the wire. Now I'm going to do, and again, in case you haven't seen it yet, this thing just has a wing nut on it and a screw. I got the wing nut. I got the screw. I went to Home Depot, saw what size screw fit through this metal rod that comes with the old gizmo, this metal thing here. It's this big whole rod. And I fit what screw went through there, and then I got a matching wing nut, and that was it. So. I'm just going to put my wire under my wing nut. We're going to go in there and we're going to run nine wraps around this thing. It's that simple. Beautifulest coils and um, the least damage to your hands. And when you're zoomed in on your hands like this, it looks pretty gnarly. I was watching last night's video. My, my dry skin looks pretty pretty bad. But if I put a bunch of lotion on my hands right now, then I'm going to have grease all over everything. So it's kind of a Catch 22. I'm going to go non-greasy for you guys. Okay. 
artistic wire coil gizmo. Look at this. Now I'm going to put a little tension on it. Every time this this device passes my wire over here is a wrap. Okay, so we're just going to go in and we're going to knock out nine wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just like that. That's the easiest way to wrap coil. This device costs about maximum of 20. I think people have gotten it for as low as like eight or nine bucks you can get it off like amazon michaels i would anyone that wraps coils i would get one i wrapped that one quick no real precision to it just banged it out and it makes a beautiful coil um i'm gonna remove a leg from it because i wrapped it quick i'm gonna give it one pull so it'll wind up with eight wraps all I'm going to do there is, I know I have nine wraps on there, so it's very easy to count them. All I'm going to do is put it back on the tool. If I can get it back on the tool. Grab my pliers here. I'm just going to pull this wrap off. Normally, you never have to deal with starter wraps whatsoever on this thing. It's just not a thing, but I just set that up quick just to show you. I'll just give this a pull until that leg comes around. I know then... I just took a wrap off, basically about half a wrap. Okay, now we got the coils built. Let's mount these puppies on the arm too.